Episode 3 of the StarCast Variety Show is brought to you by the Knight of Wands. Join me, Christiana Gaudette, my co-host, Frank Kwiatkowski, and all our great show contributors as we take our passion for divination out and about. Hey, Frank, it is time for episode three of the StarCast Variety Show. How are you? I'm doing great, Christiana. Yes, episode three. I'm very excited. We are still doing this thing. It's really kind of taking off a little bit, isn't it? It is just like StarCon is. And of course, StarCon 2023 is coming soon, January, January 20th through 22nd. Tickets are available now. And if you come to StarCon 2023, you will get to meet Maria Alves Hernando, who will be speaking live and in person. She's flying all the way from Madrid to come be with us. And this episode, episode three, features an interview with her. And I've never spoken with her before. Uh, only like, you know, back and forth on social media. First time speaking with her. Oh my gosh, she is brilliant. I love her. I know you're going to love her too. I can't wait to meet her. I can't wait to meet all of the people that are going to be at StarCon come January. I did reserve my hotel room at the, uh, I believe it's at a Hilton. Isn't that right, Christiane? It is. It is. It is the Hilton Airport Palm Beach Hotel. And it is, it is great, man. We've got a free shuttle from the airport and uh, it is a resort hotel, uh, bars and restaurants and even a tiki bar. So I'll see you there. Sweet. Looking forward to that. Also part of this week's episode, we are doing another Tarot Topics discussion panel. This time we have a different set of panelists. We have Jamie Elford, we have Kim Dambert, we have Lainey Sylvan Wolken. Fascinating conversation. Can't wait to do that. Wow, that is that is a great lineup of people. And uh, they're all connected to StarCon. Lainey, of course, will be presenting at StarCon 2023. Kim and Jamie have presented uh, 21 and 22. So they're all part of our StarCon family. And we have had not one, but two video submissions from StarCon 2023 presenters that we will be sharing with you this episode, uh, for all the way from Scotland, we've got Marion Kirk, and she will be flying in to be with us in person. And she has shared with us for this episode a tarot conference survival guide. You are going to love this. And we have a first time presenter, Peter Coe, and he shared with us just a little behind the scenes of the setup of an outside psychic fair. So we have tarot readers out and about this week. Out and about, a little bit of a theme this week. I like yeah. it. Help, yeah. It'll help some of our people who want to go out and about and read, uh, read some tarot cards out in public. Absolutely. Just a reminder, too, uh, for anybody watching, we are looking for a diverse group of uh, people who are making a contribution to the show. So if you have an idea for a little 10-minute video uh, that you'd like to present to us here on uh, the StarCast Variety Show, uh, drop a line to myself or to Christiana, uh, either through Facebook or you can email her at cgaudette at starcon.com. Isn't that right, Christiana? That is right. And just remember, there are two A's in StarCon. StarCon with two A's, exactly. Yes, yes. You know what? I just want to say, too, that I am really excited about and I want everyone else to be excited about, too. Amber Highland, who was in last week's panel, is, of course, the editor of the Cardamancer. She will be speaking at, uh, at StarCon 2023. And the fall edition of the Cardamancer is coming out really, really soon. It's available for pre-order as we speak. I can't wait to read it. I just read actually that you made a little contribution to the magazine yourself, uh, Christiana. Mm. It's my understanding you're reviewing the Grateful Dead Tarot. Isn't that right? Yes. And it's a little more than a review. So you know me. I My first tarot reading ever was uh, like for a stranger was done on the lot of a Grateful Dead show. You know, feels, feels like a stranger or <laughs> oh yes <laughs> grateful dead reference sorry about that absolutely um and so i always wanted there to be a grateful dead tarot and so many people tried and and it just never happened and finally it has happened and the designer and the author 
sat with me in a Zoom call to answer all my questions. And so this is a review, but it's more than a review. It's how this deck came to be. And it is special and it is beautiful. And I'm so excited to share it with everyone. I know it's a matter that's very close to your heart. I can't wait to read it. But uh, unless there's anything else, maybe we should get to the show here, Christiana. Let's do it. Let's do it. First up, as we prepare for StarCon 2023, Marion Kirk has a survival guide for attending an in-person tarot conference. Hello, everybody watching, and welcome to your quick fire survival guide to a tarot conference. If you have never been to a tarot conference, it is fantastic. For those of you who have been to a tarot conference, you know it's fantastic. However, this is just a wee guide to, mm, let's see, prepare you. Because after all, a lot of us haven't been anywhere for quite some time. So, um, just want to make a disclaimer before we get into this. This is all just a wee bit of fun. Okay, so first things first, you arrive at the tarot conference and you are super excited. You are you are just buzzing inside and you're like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I can't wait. I'm going to see this person, I'm going to see that person and it's going to be amazing. Yes, it is. However, however, tarot conferences create a huge amount of psychic energy. And psychic energy is amazing and wonderful but it can be exhausting. So, tip number one. A crystal. Smoky quartz, black tourmaline, black obsidian, any of the darker crystals that create and promote grounding. Now, you don't have to have one that size. A tiny wee pebble stone, tiny wee pebbled crystal is absolutely fine. Keep it in your pocket, keep it in your purse. Keep it somewhere else that you feel safe for it to be. I'll leave that up to you. Because that just keeps us grounded. And it's all very exciting. Can you tell how excited I am? Because I am. Um, and it just, it just helps us flow. Right? Second thing. Hydrate. Drink lots and lots of water. Or juice. Um, to your coffee. Mm, well, you know. That's up to you, depending on your caffeine tolerance. Allegedly, alcohol is not something that hydrates you. I know, I was shocked at this news as well. Anyway, that's for night time. The alcohol is for night time. Or if you're a speaker and you're really nervous, maybe 15 minutes before you go on stage, just nip to the bar, get a wee quick shot of something, you know, maybe a wee Southern Comfort. No, that I would ever do that you know and you can go ahead and just have fun because that's the main thing we are going to be learning loads and you're going to be absorbing loads and loads of information and there is a term called conference brain because by the end of the few days your brain is literally and you and you literally cannot absorb anything else right so when you get to a presentation, right, you're super excited, you've got your tarot besties beside you and you've all decided what what talk you're going to go to, what intensive you're going to go to, and you look, right, what do you physically need, right? Now, there's two schools of thought around this. You can either go in, sit and absorb the information and through the process of osmosis, that means absorption, Mm -hmm. you can sit and just listen to the presenter and maybe if there's an exercise you can do the exercise right other people other people love to journal right love to take notes love to basically word for word write down everything that the presenter is saying and that's amazing as well however top tip StarCon has got the replay for 30 days. So it's up to you. It's just a wee suggestion that in the actual physical presentation, you just sit and you engage with the presenter and you watch the presenter. 
And if you come to any kind of, if you have any like kind of mind blowing like moments of amazement, you know, and your brain's just like, oh, I've never thought of that before, then yeah, write that down in your notebook. Because, you know, that wee moment, because if anybody's anything like me, I have amazing ideas. And then five minutes later, it's like, hmm, what was that again? Right, so have a wee notepad and pen. And also in the interest of patting light, one pen, four inks. It's an option. What? Okay, so next thing's next. Right, so you're there and you've got your notepad and pen. Mm, now, how many decks of cards do you bring? Now, we all, we all would love to have, you know, a plethora of cards with us because you're like, oh, well, I need that deck for such and such a class or maybe I should bring that tarot deck for this other presentation or, hmm, Oh, but you just, you just, it's a comfort thing, right? It's like your tarot decks are your comfort blanket and you don't want to leave home without them, right? Here's the thing. At a tarot conference, and especially StarCon, there is going to be tables and tables and tables. Um, amazing people, creators, artists, publishers, all selling decks. Uh -huh. I know, amazing. So, what I would recommend is one, maybe two decks from home. And remember, if you're travelling by air, then you have got a limited amount of space in your luggage. Okay, so I would suggest just um, leaving space. Leaving space on the way there that you can fill up with all the amazing things that you're going to be tempted with. Um, and you're going to buy, okay? Trust me. As a wee aside, my first tarot conference, I went with a spare suitcase and said spare suitcase was filled with my new tarot decks that I bought. And going through security, I get stopped because the cameras couldn't distinguish what was in my um, suitcase. And yes, it was all very embarrassing whereby the security, I believe in America, it's the TSA, um, were joyfully lifting each box of tarot cards out of my suitcase and at one point they were going to open them now I was hyperventilating it was all very traumatizing so if you don't want to do that if you want to avoid that then you know heads up right so let's see what else handouts when you're at presentations you are more than likely going to get handouts if you want to retain the pristine smoothness of said handouts may i suggest a plastic wallet okay now it's going to be american letter size this is a4 because i'm not in america so i don't use american letter size right. any kind of plastic wallet that you know is going to fit the handouts okay pop them in there and it's amazing and then when you get home your handouts aren't they going to look like they've went through a spin cycle in the washing machine Okay, so <laughs> last but not least, oh no, second last, right, I'm getting ahead of myself here, okay, bring a bag, you know, doesn't need to be like this, but bring a specific tote bag to put all your bits and pieces in, so you put your deck in, you put your notebook, you put your plastic wallet for the handouts, you can have space for a bottle of water, um, a wee snack, that's another thing, take snacks, whether it's for the hotel, whether it's from a shop and you just pop them in your tarot bag, eat little and often again because that adds to that grounding aspect, okay, because it, trust me, it is so exciting, right? So yeah, so ground yourself at all times as much as you can. And now finally, um, money, okay, whether that is credit card, debit card, Knowing your PayPal, um, what else? I don't know whether you want to trade tarot decks, right? Currency, any kind of currency that you know will be accepted by vendors. Um, because I say there is nothing worse than going there and and have some cash as well. Um, because sometimes, you know, whether it's the internet, whether it's something, you know, sometimes your card doesn't going to work. So have some cash as well. 
So my loves, that is my fun guide to surviving a tarot conference. I hope to see you all in January. I am so excited. And um, yeah, so until then, take these tips with a pinch of salt. Okie dokie. Right, bye bye. Now it's time for a panel discussion. Can you really read tarot accurately for yourself? Hi, it's Frank here. And once again, it is time for a tarot topics discussion panel where we bring together a group of tarot professionals and aficionados to share their perspectives on a tarot related topic of discussion. Let us begin by saying welcome to our illustrious panel. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Happy to have you all here. Uh, and I will introduce our panelists for this, uh, this episode. And our first panelist is the co-creatress of the Food Healing Oracle Deck, Nourishing Wisdom from Mother Earth, and the forthcoming Second Helpings Deck, More Nourishing Wisdom from Mother Earth. She teaches classes on Tarot's Major Arcana, Archangels and Ascended Masters, and Nature's Five Elements, and how food has deeper and mystical messages for us all. To learn more, visit foodhealingdeck.com. Let's welcome Lainey Savante Wolken. Hi, Lainey. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Thank All you. Right. <laughs> and our second panelist is known internationally for her gifts to connect with the spiritual world and has been conducting psychic readings professionally for 40 years. She's co hosted a call in radio program, attended the Reader's Studio Tarot Symposium, presented at the World Tarot Congress and has also presented at StarCon for the past two years. To learn more about her, visit KimDanvert.com. So please help me welcome Kim Danvert. Hi, Kim. Hi. I sound so old, don't I? <laughs> I, am, I am that old. I am actually that old. Oh, I, love, I, love your, I love your hair. It looks awesome. Oh, thank you. I woke up this morning. It was like this. I don't ah, know. Very nice. All right, and moving on to our third panelist. Taro is our third panelist, Inner Compass. She uses it to explore the world we live in and create meaning. She wrote the award-nominated Taro Inspired Life and designed the Triple Goddess Taro. Portland, Oregon gives her a wonderful backdrop to write and innovate. To find out more about Jamie and her offerings, visit linktree backslash Jamie underscore Elford. And let's welcome Jamie Elford. Hello, Jamie. Yes, she has hands. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So for those who are new to the tarot discussion, uh, tarot topics discussion panel, I just uh, pull a little question out of the hopper here and we get the responses from all of our panelists to see what they, uh, what kind of perspectives they have to offer. So let me pull out here and see what I've got. All right, here we go. Are we are we ready for a little discussion yeah. here? Is there a theme music or a drum roll, just out of curiosity? Dude. Uh, you know, we're still pretty new at this, Lainey. That's maybe something that we will work towards. I have point. a feeling. That's, that's a good idea. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So our, our question today is, and this is a debate you sometimes hear among tarot readers, is can people read accurately for themselves? Uh, there are some people who believe that you should really go and have your cards read by another person. And then there are others who believe that you can, in fact, read accurately for yourself. Uh, I'd love all of your perspectives on this. And if you do feel like you either can or cannot read accurately for yourself, just explain a little bit why you feel that way. Uh, and let's see, do we have a, a volunteer, somebody who uh, would like to go first? Everybody, of course, is going to have a chance to chat. Maybe I'll go to, um, uh, all right, Lainey, raise your hand. Uh, Lainey, what if- But what Jamie did too, but I'll, you know, I'm on the fence with it. that. Okay, I'm on the fence with that one because sometimes I can read for myself and sometimes I can't. Depends how serious the question is, but I actually do read for myself, but I would always love to get a backup plan and a backup uh, reader. But I think that if you're going to read for yourself, really practice the self-awareness of becoming neutral, really stepping outside, going within and really separating yourself from the ability to call in spirit and bring in that information. 
that would be my my thumbnail opinion on that. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, that's a that's a good way to get us started off. Uh, Jamie, would you like to expand on what Lainey said, or, or where do you where do you land on this? Heck yeah, question? I believe that anybody can really read for themselves, and they're. I mean, I know I do as well. There are a couple of tricks in my repertoire that I do. Um, first off, we all have bias. You know, I, I like to tell people that are at psychic fairs to, you know, if they're able to spend however much money they have, go see as many different readers, ask the same question to those each of those readers, and you will understand the idea of reader bias or, you know, interpretation. Because, um, you know, there's four of us here. If Frank, you know, Frank asked the question, we're all going to come at it similarly, but differently. So, you know, first off is to recognize everybody's, you know, that we all have a bias and that, yes, we all, you know, if there's an answer that's kind of like more yes or no or positive kind of negative, yes, we all want the positive slant out of it. But when I read for myself, some of the things I'll do is I'll take somebody else's book and use that as my reading, you know, that way I get myself out of the, um, the bias pool where I, I'm not, you know, uh, desired for that one question. Instead, I have like uh, Kim or, you know, when when Frank gets his book out, you know, if he has terror meetings that I'll say, well, what does Frank say about all this? Um, another thing I do is I do quick readings where I mainly um, I pull a card and I write down what I see straight off before my conscious brain kicks in and goes, that's not what this card really means. You know, I, I do, um, I know, like, I think it's Farrell Humphrey who coined the, the term blurts, B-L-U-R-T-S, where she will just say, just blurt out what you think, because that's trusting our gut a little bit more. Um, and then, of course, Courtney Weber wrote a fantastic book to help you kind of see what happens when you put your bias in and or when you're able to remove it called Tarot for One. And she taught a class at this a couple of years ago at Newt's. And one of the things she taught was pull all the cards that you want for that question out. And then with the remaining deck, or even you can even pick a new deck if you want those cards to possibly come out, you know, lay down and see what the universe has to say about it. And then, you know, kind of dialogue between the two. So there are, yeah, I believe that anybody can read for themselves. It's just, it depends on what out what bias you have towards the outcome and whether or not you feel like you can like Lainey said you can be uh removed from that situation hmm. well uh that's a lot of very valuable information jamie a, a great perspective on that i'd love to hear what kim has to say about that i mean as i mentioned in the introduction she's been reading for 40 years and i think implicit in that <laughs> is that you've been reading for others for 40 years I don't know how much you read for yourself as well, Kim. Um, what do you think about the question? Can you read for yourself accurately? I love this question. Uh, can you read for yourself? Yes. Can you do it accurately? Sometimes. I, I want to say yeah. I agree. I agree with what with what both Jamie and Lainey said. I, I I think I'm right there on the edge. But I, of course, I come at things from my own bias which is my belief in Christianity. And in Christianity, it says the gifts are without repentance. The, the Bible says the gifts are without repentance. So you're, you've been given a gift to interpret tarot. Why would you be given a gift to interpret tarot if you couldn't do it for yourself? So I believe absolutely we can do this. I, I think spirit comes to us when we open up ourselves to divinatory practices. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely believe that. And I do believe that um, what you were saying, um, Jamie, about, you know, just look at the blurt. What is the first idea that you have when you look at this card? You're asking the card and then you're asking the question, and then what, are, what is the first thing that hits you? It's one of the exercises that I saw Mary Greer do one time at a convention. And she said, what's the first thing that hits you? If it's the if it's the cup, if it's the horse, what is it? Describe that thing. Come up with some adjectives. What do those adjectives have to say about the question you ask? So I think there are ways to do this. Why would we why would we have this ability if we weren't able to do it for ourselves? 
even for new readers, they can cover up the words. So they create, they remove that bias and just look at that picture and tune right into that intuition. Really, really helpful. You know what, where this question came from is I was on a tarot discussion uh, Facebook page and somebody, I don't think this was meant to be, um, to start trouble, but somebody posted on, on a Facebook page, something to the effect of, it is impossible by its nature intrinsically to read cards accurately for yourself because okay. there's no way you- Can I say something you, about that? You are, of you are- it is. If you think it's impossible, it is impossible for you. It's already you one know, and done. Don't group <laughs> us in, the, in, in that group. You know, don't, uh, don't speak for me. You know, <laughs> if you think it's impossible for you to do that, it is impossible for you. See, and Rick already has us debating. <laughs> that's right. and, and that's why I like the idea of, like, I always say that I am an experimenter with tarot, you know? It's yeah. like, I, you know, a lot of us that grew up in the 80s or, you know, the 90s were taught you can't buy your own decks. You must wrap them oh. in black silk only, black or purple. That they, What I like to call the thou shouts and all that. And we've blown that out of the water. How many decks are there out, you know, and growing? I mean, I've written for over 20 decks, you know, and yeah, you could probably see rep repetitions if you put all my deck books together, but there's also that the, the nuance and everything in it. And if you don't experiment and say, well, why can't I play with my deck? Or like, I have a whole class around drinking, you know, like literally called imbibe and divine where you drink a couple of glasses of alcohol and decide whether or not you want to drink well under the influence and read for other people. Or if you want to read for those that are, you know, I mean, it's, you got to experiment and see what works for you. Hmm. So you oh. no, go ahead, Kim. I'm sorry. I was, you were mentioning how many decks there are now. And I was thinking about that because when I, you know, all that long ago, when I actually first started doing readings, I got my first deck at a magic shop. And those, you mentioned those black silks and everything. I spent a fortune in that, but I still have that deck. I still have that deck right in front of me. This is the sacred rose tarot. I've modified it because it, I ran over it with a chair. <laughs> Don't judge me. I, I Don't judge happens. Me. Anyway, I was doing a, an event and I was in an office chair, ran over one of my um, cards, but she had three decks, you know, take it or leave it. Now, the, I, I, none of us know how many decks there are, do we? I mean, I Thousands. think Zero is really having its moment, don't you think? Mm. So maybe, maybe Kim, kind of to piggyback on what you're saying, there are certain decks that you have designated for self-reading compared to the ones that you would use for uh, reading for clients. Would you say that's accurate? I think it's a, a good practice to get into. I think that it's good to designate decks that you're, this is me communicating with spirit or this is me, you know, getting guidance and nobody else I, I don't read for other people with those decks. And, and I think it's a good practice to get into because that way it's just, you know, it's saturated with your energy and your spirit and your spirit guides and the people that you love and the crystals that you have, you know, it's, it's that saturated for you mm. and it's going to speak to you. It will speak to you. I think that um, there are, I, I have found some people in my practice that are maybe, they, they want to learn everything, you know, all the appropriate interpretations of um, the cards. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Anything you learn, I think it's really good. But that is regurgitation. That is not interpretation. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we are almost out of time. 10 minutes goes by way, way too fast, but I would like to bring everybody in just kind of quickly on one final point uh, as it's related to our question here, because what I've heard from, from all of our panelists is in essence that we bring our biases to self-readings and to some degree we have to accept that and sort of 
uh, sort of work with those biases uh, that we bring intrinsically to the readings. That doesn't mean that we can't do accurate readings for ourselves, but we just have to be aware of those biases. Uh, Lady, how do you overcome that? Uh, how do you learn to recognize the biases that you bring into self-reading? And then how does that help you kind of navigate the cards that you draw for yourself? Mm. Well, it brings up what I was going to say is that it's super helpful when you can dabble and Kim admits crystals, but when you can bring in a few other little divination tools for, at, for instance, a pendulum and you can clear the space, double check, you can actually pull the bias aside when you have your cards, when you have your pendulum, uh, you can look at a flame and a candle, there's even you know, whatever works for you that's in your toolkit. Uh, I would say bring it out, especially when it comes to uh, self-observation and whatever sort of other healing techniques. I have a whole, a whole, a whole list of them. But I would just start with some really simple ones. And I know pendulum, whether you act as a human pendulum and you you move forward as a yes, you move back as a no, you use your own, you know, hand pendulum, those are all so very, very helpful to eliminate, double check and stand in that inherent knowing of confidence within the intuition, knowing that you've set yourself aside and you're letting spirit provide the, the work and you're doing the listening. All right, very good. And what about you, Jamie? You mentioned a number of different techniques that you've kind of picked up from other people. Is there one that's your favorite that works best for you? Hmm. I'd say the one that works best for me, the one I go to mostly is to, um, you know, first off, yeah, know yourself you know even if you know the outcome you want and even if you know kind of your your gut check on maybe either they line up or not you know put that into the reading because that's okay too and then secondly like for me the one i go back to is i i will pull books from others that's really the one that i kind of do on occasion i'll i'll you know do my own gut checks I'll, you know, layer the meanings or the meanings, my personal dictionary of meanings onto things first. And then I will, you know, like set, not second guess, but, you know, if I have to get that bias of mine out of the way, then I pull somebody else's book, like Liz Worth's uh, Going Beyond the Little White Book or Mary Kay Greer. But the, the trick with that is to not overwrite what you've seen mm -hmm. because then you'll start doubting your own gut. And you'll start looking at the masters for, you know, oh, well, they say this, therefore they, and they published, therefore they're better than mine. They're not, we're mm -hmm. not. Everybody's gut is, has equal footing in readings. Well said. Well, thank you. And Kim, I'll give you the last word on this. Uh, one final little bit of advice you would give to somebody who's reading for themselves. Believe what the cards tell you the first time they tell you. Don't wonderful start don't start pulling out other cards because you don't like the death card <laughs> but trust i'm with process. her i love that <laughs> i, I tell cards. people that all the time <laughs> well, well this has been an excellent panel thank you all very much for being with me for today's tarot topics discussion panel that's all the time we have for this week i want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you all again next time bye-bye everybody thank you Next, Peter Coe shares his setup for an outdoor psychic fair. Well, good morning. We're out in the trenches here. Uh, we're doing a metaphysical fair in, in Northern Virginia. In fact, it's in Falls Church. Here, are my assistant Megan is with me. And uh, here's what we're offering today in our event. We got a collection of great decks from, from Schiffer Publishing. And uh, we, there's a couple of decks from U.S. Games and Llewellyn also, plus a, a collection of Hay House decks here. The Edgar Allan Poe deck and the Hummingbird Oracle have been uh, two of the best-selling decks that uh, I have ever had at any of my events. Uh, well, I guess because they're so awesome. And then over here, we offer a collection of Reiki-infused bath salts. In, in five different uh, uh, varieties, and also uh, 
uh, sprays, uh, protection sprays, enhancement sprays, attraction sprays. So we got a wide collection of things. Um, and the event's about to start in just a few minutes. So uh, we're off and running. Oh, also back here is uh, where I'll be doing readings. I'm all, I'm all set up, and there, there is Megan again, all, all happy and willing to help me uh, today. Thank you. It's time for five questions with StarCon presenter Maria Alves Fernando. Maria Alves Hernando, thank you so much for joining me on the StarCast Variety Show, Episode 3. How are you? Hi, Christiana. Thank you very, very much for having me. I could literally not be more excited for this. I, I have not slept, like seriously, so I am fangirling hugely. <laughs> and super, super excited to be doing this, to be joining StarCon and everything else. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate all of that. And um, I know you have a lot of fans too watching this. So, uh, so fabulous. And some people are looking at this and saying, oh, but we've seen this face before. You were actually featured in our first episode of the StarCast Variety Show for oh. our tarot guessing game. I was, I was, I, I, I didn't remember until now, but yeah, true. Yes. It was the Ace of Wands, wasn't it? I think. It. Uh, what was it? Yeah, I think it was. Ace of Wands, yes. I yep. think it was the Ace of Wands. Yes. Yeah. Very well done. All right. So before we do our five questions, just tell me, like, where in the world are you right now? So I am in Madrid in Spain. Well, actually, I'm in a town near Madrid, but that would be like getting <laughs> too specific. And uh, yeah, this is it. It is over 30 degrees. So we are in, you know, a lot of heat. Well, like the whole summer has been a heat wave, like perpetually. <laughs> so that's the current situation that we have now. And for all our American friends, that would be 30 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Right, because we yeah. all do Fahrenheit, so 30 degrees is like below freezing for us. So that's just a, a funny thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know how to do Fahrenheit. It's like, uh, I don't know, like an oven. Like It's like 200 <laughs> degrees, and it's like, that's my oven. <laughs> so that's not a human temperature. <laughs> so, yeah. and I'm so excited that you will be not only presenting at StarCon 2023, but getting on a plane. I actually, how many planes are you going to have to take to come to Florida? Just the one, because I was so lucky to find a plane that was like a direct, a direct flight. Mm, so good. And yeah, it's so good. And even like the hours are not too bad. So I won't be so jet lagged. Uh, so I have been super, super lucky. Excellent. The only thing... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, the only thing is I'm, I'm arriving at Miami International, so I will have to take the train or something, but that's on land, so <laughs> I feel safer doing that. And you know what? The train is actually fun, taking the train from Miami to West Palm Beach. These are things we do for fun because the it's comfortable, the scenery is cool. You'll, you'll enjoy the train ride. It'll be great. Yeah, that's wonderful then. I, I am sure I will enjoy it more than being up in the air. <laughs> Indeed. About, definitely better scenery. <laughs> Great. I'm so looking forward to that. Yes. And, and again, we're so excited. Um, I was just telling you before we got started that of the international people, and we have quite a few international people coming and participating. And of course, you have the choice. You can participate in person or online. But you are like the first to very publicly book your plane ticket. And now a lot of other people have booked their plane tickets because, well, if Maria's coming, we can do it too. So, so thank you for being a good role model in our community. Well, thanks to you for inviting me. Like I really, I had to do it. Mm. And uh, I was thinking about it. And actually, I decided it while I was parking with a friend. I was like, yes, let's, 
let's do this. I was like, what do you think? And she was like, do it. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. So then I began to just look into things. And uh, yeah, it's a bit crazy, but I am really, really excited. So yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? We're so excited to have you. So five questions. Five Start questions. With, starting with, tell us in terms of, you know, your divination world, your tarot world, all of that, what do you do right now, day to day? What's your daily life? I know that you, like me, are a full-time professional diviner. What does your divination work in life look like right now? Well, so my divination working life, mostly it's seeing clients, like, you know, like the most obvious part. And uh, I do that mostly online. I think that, you know, since the whole pandemics uh, and uh, this situation, we all were forced into the online world and people have discovered how comfortable it is to be in your pajamas <laughs> at home getting your reading. We all want to do that. Not even, not even having to get dressed. So mostly online. That's what I'm doing. Also taking students and teaching. And uh, I am now focusing a bit more on creating a content that I'm hoping to put out there at some point soon. And uh, learning, uh, actually, I had been, you see, I had been a a lot of times like having a bit of a block when it, came, when it came to learning new things because I didn't know like where to look at or what was missing. And I began to look into like obscure correspondences, like wanting to get to become a better diviner mm -hmm. and a better reader. And uh, what I realized is that uh, like the more my understanding of the world in general and what's in it, grows and expands the better reader I, I become and uh, you know the more than I'm able to get specific and uh, it doesn't have to do with divination so I'm like learning a lot of random things and that's a huge part of my day now lately. So can you give me an example I, I'm just now I'm fascinated oh. uh, give me an example of a random thing you have recently learned. Yeah, so for instance, something that uh, didn't have much to do with uh, what I'm doing about uh, learning uh, a bit more about uh, how real estate works, which is uh, something that people ask a whole lot, but I had no idea of how the whole process of, you know, looking for a house and the closing on a house and the inspections that you have to do and the, how that whole process works. I had absolutely no idea. And it's something that people ask us all the time, like, uh, you know, um, am I going to buy a house or am I, is my offer going to be accepted or when I'm going to move? And uh, learning more about that, which is like very mundane, uh, when I am reading on something that's related to someone moving, I can more accurately translate what the cards are trying to say because I'm not what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. And before I was just trying to make sense of them. So when you are reading with knowledge of the subject, you are a better reader because you can translate the language of the cards into the language of what's happening, if that makes any sense. That is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Yes, that makes a huge amount of sense. And it's such good advice for anyone, either who is a professional reader or wants to become a professional reader. And it's not any advice I've ever given anyone ever to pay attention to the things that happen in life, real yeah. relationships, cars, you know, whatever, because if you understand that language, you will see how your divination tool is speaking in that language. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so, you know, I am now like learning random stuff and uh, watching lots of videos of things that don't really apply to my life or are not even like of interest to me, but that can be happening in the life of my clients. And that that's something that has, uh, you know, in the past few months, it has made me a better reader, I believe, because I can now um, like be much more specific 
when I know the possibilities of what can be going on. So perfect. I love that. I love that. Great. Okay. So your divination origin story, how did this all start? Okay, so my divination inception, <laughs> what uh, started the whole thing uh, was a necklace uh, made of florid that is florid. How you say it? Florid? Flowers? Flowers? No, florid, uh, the, the, the crystal. Oh, fluoride. Uh, fluoride, fluoride. Okay, fluoride. So it was a crisp uh, uh, necklace uh, with a piece of fluoride that started the whole thing. Uh, when I was a mere 14, <laughs> so I was a child and uh, I had a friend who gave me a necklace that had a piece of fluoride and uh, told me a what to me what like like a what to me was like a super crazy story of uh storing energy into the necklace and the, the energy of crystals and all that that sounded like so crazy to me at the moment it was like my first ever contact with anything like this but it was like the whole gateway to all the craziness that came after and the uh, you know, a uh, fun story is that uh, at the beginning, I thought that only like fluoride was special or like it like fluoride had powers and the rest of crystals did not. Uh, and uh, I began to pay a lot of attention to like that crystal in particular. And this led to uh, once I was with my father and there was a local market, like a medieval themed market that we do here in my city yearly. And uh, there was one of this uh, woo stands of crystals. And I saw a pendulum made of fluorite and my father bought it for me. And that was like my first ever uh, pendulum, my first ever divination tool. Wow. Spoiler, I broke it quite soon because <laughs> fluorite is very fragile. Very, very. <laughs> So yeah, I broke it quite soon. And uh, then a uh, dozen friend who gave me the florid necklace uh, talk, told me about uh, tarot. The first uh, thing that I ever knew uh, was that uh, his girlfriend uh, read the major arcana. Mm -hmm. And uh, I began to want to know more about tarot and the whole thing. And uh, as a result, I ended up buying my first uh, deck. Uh, which I have here, it is, I'm showing it to the camera, the Da Vinci Tarot. Mm -hmm. This was the first deck I ever uh, had and that I bought behind the back of my parents. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's how it happened. I began reading the major, uh, the major kind of only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. That is just so great. And so how did you take take that into a full-time professional gig well i'm not quite sure how that happened to be honest <laughs> like, you know it it just happened uh i began with a uh, tarot and divination and the spirituality and everything related and uh, probably you know that you start with this and you just become weirder and weirder so <laughs> So, you know, and I was very young, so I had a lot of time to, in my hands, to look into uh, things. And uh, I spent quite a, a lot of time with uh, tarot. I began reading for friends because back then, even though it was not so back then, but uh, Facebook wasn't a thing. And uh, there was internet, but it didn't occur to me that there would be information about this. Um, so I had one uh, book. Uh, I, I am going to show it here on the camera. It's a very small booklet like this. Uh, it has, let me show or let me uh, say it out loud. It has 60 pages but it's just a booklet so this was my whole information and the whole uh you know the whole of the information and my my whole tarot world for a lot of years so just this booklet and the the few spreads that it showed and the the information contained in something that for those that are just listening is 
I don't know, thinner than a notebook. So just a very little thing, <laughs> but this was uh, what I had. So it came to a point in which I had to improvise and I had to go uh, the way of trial and error when practicing with people. And uh, that made me uh, or led me to meeting all the weird people, fortunately. <laughs> so, you know, when weird meets weird, then uh, weirdness <laughs> grows and uh, that's uh you know how i began to see uh people that made a living out of this or who were at least attempting to do so and it occurred to me that it could be a possibility and you know from then on one thing led to the other i had a few jobs that i did not like really feel and uh, i had the realization uh, that I didn't want to dedicate a whole third of my day to someone who was smarter than me. <laughs> so uh, I was like, you know, I have to do something that I am motivated actually, um, you know, to, to doing and to dedicating such a huge amount of time to, and that doesn't chew my soul and spirit. So I decided to give this a go and uh, I became aware of the internet as a tool to expand. Uh, Cause first I tried locally with uh, miserable success. <laughs> Like seriously, it was, it was not a good thing at all. But then I discovered the internet, and I discovered, uh, you know, other options, uh, people, eclectic tarot. If you remember that wonderful forum, I the do. <laughs> and yes. uh, you know, a whole lot of people that I met there, and the uh, doors that opened, and a lot of trial and error, and uh, lots of um, pasta. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am I am actually a full-time breather. Oh man. So that's it. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, there are very few of us. You know, there are lots of lots and lots of readers, lots of readers who sort of do it part-time or have other incomes. Yeah. There's not that many people who have made their full-time career in divination and also aren't scam artists yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that, that that that's something that you needed to to yeah add yeah no absolutely Definitely, yeah yeah and i know you are very active with the international divination association yeah the world divination association world, thank you world divination association sorry i, got yeah, I have it like a halo here yes you do yes you do <laughs> and i was so honored that y'all named me the world's best tarot reader of 2021. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I was, uh, you know, uh, I was in the run for that. I was super honored to just be there in like <laughs> in the votings. And uh, I remember that that day I was like, dude, I am here, uh, you know, uh, nominated is what you what you say. Nominated, yeah, you were nominated. nominated with Christiana Godet, who is like the tarot goddess. So that's enough. <laughs> For me, I was like fangirling so hard at just, you know, being there so super duper deserved. And uh, yeah, of course, you are the reader. Well, and so so you can win it in 2022. Well, uh, I think that actually uh, we are knowing more about the nominees, uh, nominees uh, on tomorrow, I think. Uh, I don't know in, in which day I live. Okay. <laughs> so I think that the nominations are coming out uh, tomorrow. So exciting. So would you just as a sidebar here, tell people a little bit about what the World Divination Association does? Yes, of course. So the World Divination Association was uh, founded in 2015. I think, yeah, I think it's 2015 uh, uh, by Tony Sabri. And uh, she's uh, my very, very dear friend. And I love, love working with her. 
so many opportunities that it has opened up for me and uh, you know I love uh, the World Divination Association because it is a place where you can meet lots of like-minded peers uh, that love divination in general regardless of the system. Uh, it is an association that aims to um, establish let's say a system so that you have bones upon which to build your readings so that you know there is there is something that i say that is uh if in your worst day you are a mediocre reader you are not that bad and that's what the system does for you it gives you some uh bones to work with to give some structure to your readers to, to your reading sorry so that uh you know even if you are uninspired even if you are not feeling like it even if your intuition is just not there nowhere to be found that day uh you know so that even at your worst you can at least be mediocre <laughs> so like i think that's uh you know some good foundation to have and uh, having systems in place to um you know be able to start talking to um, start with your uh reading when, when when you don't know where to begin with or when you have maybe a equipment that's not too communicative, but you still know like what are your steps and you still know uh, how your system works and uh, how your cards talk. And uh, you know that, uh, you know, one plus one is two and then your intuition kicks in and it makes everything a full round experience. But having that something makes you so confident, I have found as a diviner. And uh, that is what the World Divination Association tries to do, establish that foundation. And also gives it gives a lot of opportunities to the community in general for everyone to participate. Everyone can uh, become an active member and uh, everyone is welcome to share their experiences to teach, to um, become a teacher, to um, publish in the blog. So, you know, it's a lot of, um, I mean, it's a place with a lot of opportunities and a lot of movement in general and where you can make so many friends. So I love it. I, I love it too. I have to say, I've uh, been honored to teach uh, a couple of times with the yeah. World Nation Association yeah. and just met so many great people it's it's a wonderful thing and um so i'm switching up the order of questions because this is such a good segue since we're talking yeah. about this amazing international online community that you're part of yeah so we can talk about how important community is and what we do and that leads me into let's talk about StarCon 2023. Yes, please. <laughs> I actually have two questions here. Just in general, uh, being there, being part of this uh, in, in the in-person experience, especially, what are you most looking forward to? So honestly, I mean, I am looking forward to the whole learning and doing my presentation and all, but the thing that I am like the most looking forward to the most is actually getting to hang out with people that I have looked up to for so many years that I look up to now and like getting to be in the same room and, uh, you know, get drunk and talk about life <laughs> and uh, you know share some cigarettes and uh, like having the opportunity to share like actual moments of life with people that to me have been this role models is something that i am looking forward to like very much right there you know and and it's true that for those people who are going to be there with us joining us online the Accelerance platform is very immersive and you really feel like you're there in a lot of ways and that's great, but you know, you're not wrong. There is really something to be said and this is my favorite part of every conference I've ever been to. I love the education, I, I love learning, I love teaching, but man, afterwards, having a meal in the bar, those conversations, yeah, that is, 
that that is what it's all about and oh my gosh the hotel we're going to be at has a tiki bar imagine this man it's a tiki bar overlooking a lake so the tiki wow. bar is here there's a lake uh, a fire pit so if it's a little chilly there's a fire wow. and the pool really is all right there now there are two other bars too so if you don't like that bar you know we've got three bars at this hotel or maybe two two or no i guess two that's, two that's bars wonderful. but this outdoor tiki bar with the lake the pool and the fireplace oh it's gonna be so good yeah that sounds great i mean i am already impressed because like the bed is bigger than my apartment so <laughs> <laughs> so you know uh when when i saw like, the rooms and everything else it was like dude what what else uh, we can all hang out in that huge king size bed <laughs> <laughs> you know i i gotta say the best time i had uh at newts um the northwestern tower tarot symposium other than teaching yeah. was hanging out on a bed in a hotel room doing readings it was like jenna matlin melissa sanova and then a few people i hadn't met before and we were all sharing readings on a bed in a hotel room so you're not wrong about that either right <laughs> so yeah super excited about the, that whole thing <laughs> is there anything that you would like to share about what you'll be teaching about what your presentation will be Yes, uh, well, uh, my presentation that if I'm not wrong, because it's one of these super long titles that you write when you are inspired, but then you can't remember. <laughs> so uh, I, I actually took notes of what the title exactly is so that I wouldn't make a fool of myself. And uh, apparently I decided to call it the forest and the tree. Um, and it is about enhancing your tarot readings by describing with the patterns that you find, uh, absence, uh, presence, and the, it is about looking. It is about looking at the reading as a whole thing, uh, about paying attention to how the reading, the cards that you have on the table behave let's say, how they interact with, uh, how like, the reading interacts with its environment and its environment being its uh, context and the, the question and the querent and the, the cards that you have on the table and the cards that are not on the table so that it becomes less of a one by one uh, kind of reading style and uh, you can see the amount of information that is given by looking at it as all that is right there and I remember when you sent me your description I was like oh she's a good reader all right then uh, because that is the key it is absolute in my opinion how we go from say in tarot 78 cards with classic meanings, classic interpretations, various associations, how we go from that to a nuanced, insightful tarot reading that is very specific to the querent, the questions. How does that happen? That's the magic of it. And then how do we quantify that magic? You're doing it. You are doing that thing that I'm gonna tell you, many have tried, few succeed. So the fact that you see that and can conceptualize it and can teach it, that is, that's the thing. That is the whole trick of it. It is, it is a beautiful thing. And I'm so excited that people will be able to attend your class and get that, you know, because when I first started out, we didn't like, we literally did not have social media. It was not a thing. I'm old, right? Um, in fact, when I first started out, I didn't have a website. I would go around town and put up posters on bulletin boards for the things that I was doing. And I was completely just local. Uh, things have changed, obviously. And trying to figure out how to teach my first classes and share that with people, it took me a long time to put that together. And you've got it. So I'm very excited not only for you, but for all the people who will take that class. Amazing. Thank you very much. I, I couldn't be like more excited to do that. And uh, it is really a honor to hear that from you. 
uh because i i like you know you are one of the first um tarot people that i heard of when i had the idea of looking up on the internet and uh, i have uh, you know followed uh your work for a very long time and the fact that you are telling this to me is something that uh you know really i i would jump if i didn't have to behave <laughs> right now well, it, it comes truly from the heart and the head. I, it's, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So final question. This is just a fun one. Final I'm question for, already. Yeah, yes, yes, five questions. Um, I'm looking for a current favorite, current favorite about anything divination. It could be favorite deck, favorite method, favorite card, favorite book, a current favorite what are you really enjoying in the world well, of divination right now? I have a couple of things here that I wanted to show you. The first is, uh, this is uh, the Fyodor Pavlov uh, tarot deck. Oh, I it have is, never seen that. It is, uh, you know, I am like I'm showing you this right here. You can find it. It is, uh, there is a uh, mass market version coming out in September, October. Uh, and uh, I think it's US Games that is printing it. This is the indie version. And uh, what I say about this deck is if there ever was a perfect deck created, this is it for me. This is the deck that i think uh we tend to look for like the deck in which you love every single card in which everything is beautiful in which everything appeals to your eye there is no one cards that you say that you say what is this it is just perfect <laughs> so i am so very much enjoying this deck it's a Fyodor pavlov tarot and uh, I don't know if you can uh, look it up, guys. Um, um, it's going to be sold, I think, with one of those uh, pretty accompanying books that they are doing now with the full color images and everything else. So it is just perfection. So this is my current fave. And right. since I am being like very creative lately with, uh, you know, learning things and trying things, I have this small deck of cards that's called the Devil's Acre. And uh, it is an Oracle deck, a 36 card uh, fortune telling deck that is uh, based on uh, uh, Victorian London and kind of Jack the Rippery. So, <laughs> so I really love this deck and I'm using it a whole lot. Wow. That's it. Wow. My I love favorite. that. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. And of course, when you say US games, my ears uh, prick up. Uh, I'm from the Northeast. I, I live in Florida now, but I'm from the Northeast and lived for many years in Connecticut where US games is based. Um, so I've, I've like literally been to their, their facility, shall we call it. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, How is it? Oh, oh my. Oh my. So when I when I went Do they have all the decks there? Oh yes. I, Are you I taking went them home? There twice. I went there twice. Oh. Um the second time I got to meet Stuart Kaplan. I was so happy because of course mm -hmm. he passed away a few years later. I got to meet Stuart Kaplan. There's a picture of me in front of his big painting of Pamela Coleman Smith. It is it's like a just a building. It's 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 just a small building next to a dog park. They have a dog park. US Games has a dog park oh. so that the people who work there can bring their dogs to work. That's perfect. Isn't can that you amazing? bring the cats? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> dogs only. But I got to be almost perfect. Dog, so that was amazing. Um, I got to see like the original paintings from some of my favorite decks. Wow. I got to see the actual factory where they make them and they have a museum. They have like a card museum you can go through. It's really cool. And the people are all so nice. A lot of families, a lot of mothers, daughters, um, a lot of families. It, it's just an amazing place with amazing people. And so I, I just, I'm such a fan of US games. And the fact that this deck is going to be published by US Games just makes my heart sing. Guaranteed, I will get it. So now I do have to ask you a follow-up question. I know I said I was done, but I'm not. Yay, one more question, tell me. On a professional level with clients, yeah. how many different 
divination systems do you use? Not necessarily in the same reading, but in general. Okay, so uh, professionally, I use tarot, of course. I use the Oracle Berlin, which is a bit unheard of, I, um, I think, but uh, it is a wonderful tool as well. If you guys can look into it, I have found it to uh, be a really, really interesting tool. It also brings up intuition, but it has a very easy system to follow. So I am in love with the Oracle Berlin. I use Lenormand as well. And on occasion, I use uh, Keeper. Oh. Keeper. Keeper, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Yep. Keeper, yes. So uh, that's it. Mostly it's Tarot and uh, Berlin, and uh, then uh, more occasionally Lenormand and Keeper. Can you spell Berlin so we know yeah, it's... Yeah, uh, let me actually like find my deck. Oh, uh, we have people that are hearing. So it is B-E-L-L-I-N-E, -L -L -E, Oracle okay. Berlin. Okay. That was correctly spelled, right? Because, yeah, B E L L I N E. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Oracle Berlin. And uh, fabulous and back. Uh, fabulous system. I really love it. Perfect. Okay. And actually, here is the, the Another question. <laughs> final question. If people want to reach out to you for a reading or a class, yeah. how do they do it? So, uh, well, I am always available at the World Divination Association, so you can just go to the website and you will find uh, links to my sites. That's www.worlddivinationassociation.com. Uh, or you can find me on Facebook, on the Facebook groups of the WDA. You can find me, Maria V. Fernando, uh, on Facebook. And uh, I have my own website as well, which is thecivilstarot.com. And uh, uh, on Instagram as well, I am at the Civil Starro. So yeah, that's how you find me. Perfect. Maria, it has been such a delight to spend this time with you. Cannot wait Same. to meet you and have a drink with you at the Tiki Bar in West Tiki Palm. Bar. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, January 20th through 22nd, 2023. We will see you there. Yes, and I am so looking forward to it. Me too. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Let's play a game. Can you guess the tarot card? Hello, everyone. My name is Rosemary, and you may have seen my article, The Myth of Duality, in the summer edition of The Cardomancer. If you would like to see what other things I'm up to, you can check me out at goodjourneystarot.com, as well as on most social media at goodjourneystarot. I collect decks as well as read tarot for other people, and I would love to meet you. My keywords today are fulfillment, success, integration, and closure. Until we meet again, good journeys. Hi, I am Edelmisa Salazar from Lima, Peru, and I believe that our tarot readings are an extension of who we are. What I mean by this is that whatever you believe, Whatever you are into, your cards are going to be a reflection of that. So let's talk about the mysterious card of today. It talks about completion. It talks about the end of a cycle. It talks about being able to go wherever we dream of. Hi, friends. My name is Amy Emberhart. I am a tarot reader a certified life coach, a vocal coach, a podcast producer, and an all-around magic maker. I write a column called Amy's Phoenix Fire for the Cardamancer magazine, which focuses on the transformation and healing that's available to us using the tarot. I also am thrilled to be involved with StarCon. I've been around since almost the beginning, and this year I'll be presenting for the third year in a row, an intensive workshop this time that I am really excited about. I've also worked with Northwest Tarot Symposium and presented there. So I offer services, speak and write really to a global clientele, and I love what I do. 
My four words, my four keywords are manifestation achieved, successful completion, dreams realized, and mastery attained. You can find me at emberhart.com, that's E-M-B-E-R-H-A-R-T-E.com, or on Facebook or Instagram, social media, Amy, A-M-I-E, Emberhart. Do you know what the card is? It's time to guess. If you guessed the world, you got the right answer. And there we have it. Episode three. What'd you think, Frank? Episode three in the books. I really enjoyed this episode. Great interview you did. And I really liked what we got from Marion and from Peter. Uh, The game was fun again this week. I wonder how everybody did with guessing the card. And I really had a great time hosting that Tarot Topics discussion panel. Thank you to thank you again to our participants for being a part of that. Absolutely. And we are always looking for participants. If you want to send us a video, if you want us to give you an assignment for a video you might make or something you would take part in, a game, a panel, just reach out to us. And you know what else it's time to do? It is time to get your StarCon ticket. Whether you come in person or online, it's January 20th through 22nd, 2023. Tickets are available now and you want to get them because supply is limited. Just go to the website, www.starcon.com, and that's S-T-A-A-R-C-O-N. It's a beautiful new website. Anybody who hasn't been there yet, check it out. It's been completely redone. It's very nice. Not that it wasn't nice before, but it's much improved and even better now. Check it out. Thank you so much. One of the things we love about the website is... It's got a lot of archival material, so you can really see how we have grown and how we are growing, and uh, it's just so exciting. So thank you so much, Frank. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. Get those submissions into us and get those tickets. Thank you, Christiana, and thank you, everybody, for watching. See you next time. This has been the StarCast Variety Show with Frank Kwiatkowski and Christiana Gaudet. Special thanks to Marion Kirk, Peter Coe, Maria Alves Hernando, Kim Danbert, Jamie Elford, Lady Savante Wilkin, Rosemary Harrington, Maria Luisa Salazar, and Amy Emberhart. StarCon 2023 is January 20th through 22nd. Tickets are on sale now. Join us for one day, two days, or all three days in person in West Palm Beach or online on Excellence. Learn more and get your tickets at StarCon.com. That's S-T-A-A-R-C-O-N dot com. Thank you.